Namaskar and hello everyone. Today we have two luminaries with us. Mr. Johannes Peltz, Vice Director, Museum Readbox Zurich, and Ms. Aditi Mangaldas, leading India dancer and choreographer, head of Aditi Mangaldas Dance Company, and also the head of the Dristikon Dance Foundation. Art is social, art is aesthetic, art knows no geographical boundaries. A flute playing Krishna, sculpture of that at Riedberg Museum in Zurich, and a spiritual Kathak performance by Adityji, which embodies the melody of Lord Krishna's flute. Viewers today, you will also get to see a glimpse of this performance of Adityji, as well as the sculpture of the flute playing Krishna. I am Dr. Anun Naguha, Managing Director of Nrityanjali Group, and the digital platform is being managed by Ms. Urvashi Jangyani from CSMBS, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahale. So let us begin, and let me start by asking Mr. Belts if you could tell us a little bit about the journey and the association between CSMBS and Museum Readberg and your thoughts on cultural exchange. Thank you very much for giving this, me this opportunity to, to talk about this little but very nice and wonderful project. And uh, it fits very well into our vision and of, of what uh, museums um, should and how museums should cooperate globally. I think that a museum of non-European art as the Museum Riedberg has to have many interactions and exchanges and uh, cooperation projects with museums all over the world. And we are very glad and proud to have a a special relationship with the CSMVS for many, many years, which go back to the time even before I joined the Museum Reaper. During my um, time, um, actually in 2014, the Museum Reaper could organize and bring up a show on the Swiss artist Alice Boner at the CSMVS in Mumbai. And this is particularly interesting, and I mentioned this because um, this, fit, this is another connection to what we are going to see, because Alice Bona was, as you might know, living in Benares for almost 40 years, from the 30s to the 80s. And she was interested in Indian art, Indian sculpture in particular, the, the, the cave sculptures and um, she donated her collection of art to our museum, some to parts to the museum in, in Varanasi. But what I, what I want to mention here is that she was interested in all kinds of arts in India. And she, as you might know, got uh, worked together with um, Uday Shankar in his dance company. And she was very, very much behind the little Ravi Shankar to learn sitar because she thought that her that his um, that he was very gifted yeah, as a musician and when Uday Shankar and, and Alice traveled together in Europe she was always looking after him like a grandmother so there is this connection to dance and music through Alice Boner which connects our two countries, right? Switzerland oh, and oh, India. Lovely. So this is something um, which I would like to mention first. And then second, in the last decades, it was started by our former director, Dr. Eberhard Fischer. Um, he invited important Indian dancers and musicians to perform at the Museum Liebberg. It has always been our um, mission and our understanding that we have to bring contemporary artists from India to Zurich. And he, we had great, great artists here. 
I remember of uh, performances with Malika um, Sarukai um, and Kapila Venu, you know, and uh, before my time, I heard about uh, Sanyukta Panigrahi's performances at the museum. And I remember a concert with Hari Prasa Chaurasya. So this was always part of our uh, museum work, you know, this uh, concerts, theater performances. This is the core, also another important aspect of our activities. This, I'm very proud of this, and I'm very privileged about this particular friendship and partnership with the museum. And I'm really grateful to Dr. Mukherjee to uh, encourage this partnership and to let us bring this Alice Bona show to his museum. So Aditi ji, uh, if, 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 I may, if I may ask, that do you see a connection between the various art forms, you know, whether it's uh, sculpture or dance or music or painting, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, um, our arts, visual arts, performing arts, are all interconnected. It's like a huge widening circle of the arts, right? Um, I would like to take you back uh, where Kathak is concerned, to the temples. Just think of where this art was created or shared. What was that crucible? There was sunlight or moonlight filtering through beautifully sculpted columns, beautiful sculpture. The, the floor glistening by millions of devotees who had walked on it. There was the sound of a gurgling river. There were diyas that were, you know, highlighting and casting shadows over the entire ambience. There were blackened sculptures with the, with the camphor that had been burning, reverberations of the temple bell. You see the ambience? From there, it went into the courts, beautiful, glistening marble surfaces, reflecting mirrors all over that were reflecting candles and candelabra and, and all kinds of, um, of dia lights. It was glistening. There was, a, there was a fountain nearby, tinkling of a fountain, fragrance of jasmine, the people sitting in their beautiful clothes with finery and gold, woven with gold and silver. That was our ambience. Then we come onto a proscenium stage, right? Um, usually it's black, black backdrop with black wings. I think we make a mistake when we try to recreate sunlight. You can't recreate the Taj Mahal by putting a cardboard cut out of the Taj Mahal. It's, um, it, it minimizes your art and it minimizes uh, the, the art of the, you know, the art of the great architecture. In fact, in one of the lectures that I went to, Dr. B. N. Goswami is, uh, has helped me in many ways. Uh, he quoted an, a philosopher who, whose name I forget, that no great art can be, uh, interpreted or translated into another great art. It has to be transformed. And that has been an attempt where you transform that stage, transform it um, in, a, in a different sensibility. So the process of my communication is dance, but with a transformation, at least be aware of it whether you use lights, you use space. If I'm dancing alone, the transformation of shifting, even shifting in my body is a transformation. I think at this point, uh, exactly while we're talking about, you know, interweaving and the interconnectedness of the various art forms, it will be absolutely pertinent for our viewers to watch the video, connecting across space and time, Krishna, the melody within.
Beloved son, the lover of many a woman. Who are you? How can one man, one woman, a god or the goddess be all this and more? You must be life. You must be all around us in everything. Sarvam Krishnamayam Sarvam Krishnamayam Krishnamayam Oh, 
Marvelous, Aditi ji. If you could just take us through uh, the thoughts uh, when you were conceptualizing this, what was going on in your mind? Did you think about the stage design or the aesthetics, or what did you have in mind when this production came out? Well, you know, as I just said, mentioned right in the beginning, um, it was an instinctive reaction. Um, it was a ray of hope that. Uh, the Reedberg Museum and Johannes had offered us, uh, we were finding our path through a new medium. Mm -hmm. And so I, and of course, they sent many options to choose from, but the image of the, um, the, the granite sculpture of the flute playing Krishna. Playing Krishna. Uh, Krishna is such a beloved deity in yes. India. And uh, I look at the entire philosophy of Krishna differently. Because as I've said in the film, um, also I'm not a Hindu, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not a Christian. I don't belong to any organized religion. So how do I enter the world of this beautiful sculpture playing the flute, right? Um, and, and it reminded me of one of my productions called Immersed, which was about looking at Krishna and asking, who are you? You've inspired music, dance, literature, poetry, architecture, sculpture, painting for centuries. I, I mean, for me, it's impossible that even man, woman, God, goddess can be all this, can be, can be so omnipresent. Only life can be omnipresent. So the piece actually immersed is about that. Um, and then I was in this environment. I was lucky to be able to go at that point to just below my house near the ocean. And I would like to mention here that Kathak has a different way, uh, Johannes, of looking mm -hmm. at a mm -hmm. still sculpture, a still uh, painting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is not the form that becomes of utmost importance. A bird, the structure of the bird is rarely shown or very just pointed to, but the, the, the characteristic of the bird is shown. Um, you don't show uh, a fish maybe as much as you show the way the fish moves. So the, the, the structure of the Krishna playing the flute is referred to at at points, but it's actually the, the, the feeling that evokes in your body, in your mind, in your heart, um, that the flute playing evokes. And then we weave it either through Abhidaya or either through actually uh, abstract dance to weave an emotion through abstractions. That is a very strong point of um, Kathak. I would like to just briefly mention about a few works of mine um, which have a more layered and multiple, uh, struck, uh, multiple way of entering that work. I must confess that in the film, it's a more linear uh, thing. It, we were learning. Um, so I would like to talk about Interrupted. Um, interrupted emerges from the body. It's about aging. It's actually about the resilience of the body and yet how the body is constantly disintegrating. So we worked with a sculptor and he created a box backdrop which was sort of like the skin but behind it were multiple cutout images of sculptures. Um, 
and these were constantly in flux with with the dancers who were dancing in front so apparently you don't realize but your bones your muscles everything is slowly disintegrating uh, another piece now is I collaborated with um, a renowned German artist called Ziegert Spotter. We took a small painting of his and we tried to discover the simultaneous simultaneity of discovery within the painting, within the film that we used. The music by Shubha Mudgal and the dance by me. So they were, the painting was in three triptychs, uh, filmed as the eye would go over the painting. You may be uh, focusing on a detail. Maybe you break out, you pull out your eye and you see the entire film. So it was uh, the past, the future and the present. And is it possible to come together in that moment of creation of simultaneity of the various art forms? Another work of mine uh, with him was actually inspired, Johannes, you must know of the Siddha sculpture, the Jain Siddha sculpture, mm -hmm. which, is of course. Mm -hmm. which is actually a negative space because it's a cutout, you know, and it's about the cutout is the representation, uh, I guess, of, I believe, of, of an enlightened being. So what we did is the body becomes the negative sculpture. And we use, we don't use the sculpture, the sculpture, of course, but at times in the piece, which is actually a very uh, disturbing piece to begin with, it sort of shakes you up. And, and then you bring these images, which talks about a possibility of finding humanity within ourselves, um, using the inspiration of the sculpture, but the light makes the sculpture. And the last work is what um, I sourced my material for, for the Museum Reedberg film, is from Immersed. And we, as I said, it was about the, the um, omnipresence of Krishna all over. So I was only, the, the image is actually Krishna under a Kadamba tree. But what we do is we play with shadows. And so as Krishna moves, from the flute playing Krishna to, uh, to the, the Krishna the, under the Kadamba tree or the Krishna with a peacock feather, all the various aspects of Krishna. The, the lights just happen to change. So you feel as if Krishna is omnipresent, like the great Ras, you know, where he, mm -hmm. he danced with each and every gopi. So, mm -hmm. But without saying that, without using the words, but creating that sense of surrounding, being immersed in Krishna philosophy using shadows. Today, I would like to end that we are in this is our reality. I don't know for how long. Um, in my bedroom or in my living room, that's the boundary of my stage. Um, maybe my audience is within myself. So I have to find creative means of whatever is accessible to me um, and find my dance within that reality of today. That's, that's really, really uh, well said because today we are in an absolute dynamic situation. Everything is about wait and watch. And we certainly hope that things will come back together. But let me um, ask the final question to Johannes, if I may. Uh, is that mm -hmm. you earlier speaking about uh, uh, the digital space? And if you could add about how this Kathak performance of Aditi Ji based on the sculpture is something that you find is uh, find that it makes the museum work on the digital platform mm -hmm. more interesting. So. Absolutely. This is um, this is the the really the outcome of this project. It um, opened up really a new perspective of how we will in future present our collections online. 
because what we think we will have, and I'm, I'm happy to explore this with, with you, uh, Aditi, and, and other artists uh, in the future, we want to show in our museum an object and through um, a QR code or whatever link, we want to add additional information which allows the visitor to experience, experiment the object and to discover the mighty layer, layered um, meanings which are connected with this object. So you see, like, like uh, Aditi mentioned, that who is Krishna, what, what, what kind of God, God he is and what he stands for and how is he represented in, in dance or in music. And we could have other voices and other interviews, you know, with stonemasons or with architecture um, specialists and, and archaeologists so that you get a multi-layered um, context information, which you as an as a, the audience, as a visitor, you can se select what you what you want to listen and what you want to know more about it. So it's an, an enrichment, an enrichment for the, the visitor to explore an artwork. And what I think is here particularly interesting is that you don't, of course, if you see an original artwork in front of you in a museum, that's a unique experience. But despite that, uh, if we use the, the digital world in this sense and share on a global level um, our cultural heritage, and there, I mean, we are one human humanity and there's one human global heritage. I see this really as universal. If we share this uh, in a virtual world, then I think the question also gets less relevant who owns who owns an artwork and where is it in which museum and should we get it back and bring it back and all these very difficult questions and sometimes um, unsolvable questions because there it's it's about history which you can't change and it's it's quite complex so but I think the digital world allows us to to form a universal brotherhood of, and sisterhood of, of museums and where you share your collections. And I'm, when I visited the CM, uh, CSMVS in February, shortly beco before Corona um, broke out, I had a long conversation with Dr. Mukherjee and I was, um, where I was so happy to hear that he thinks his museum with the same vision, you know, and imagines this kind of cooperations for the future. Okay, that's, that's a very, very uh, noble thought. And I think that is what we say is true globalization, where the cultural boundaries can be transcended, where we are all able to share and enjoy and understand the context of the art. So viewers, today we are in the new normal, a situation which has been brought about by the coronavirus. To me, as a dancer, as a sociologist, or as a curator, I take this as an opportunity to explore the melody that is within us. Krishna played multiple roles, just like all of us do. Lord Krishna was a naughty child to his parents. He was the savior of the citizens of Gokul. At the same time, he was a fierce warrior killing Kansa. He was also looked upon as the beloved by many. We have the courage within us. We have the love and the compassion within us. I look at it metaphorically, the way Lord Krishna steered Arjuna's chariot during the Mahabharata. Can we not metaphorically become the Sarthi or the charioteer of our own life? Take it towards that direction where we can explore the melody within, where we overcome our fear, the challenges, and we emerge victorious in body, mind, spirit, and in deed. So I would like to thank Mr. Johannes Bels and Aditi Mandar Dasji for this wonderful and uh, enlightening discussion. And I'm sure our viewers are taking back a lot from our interactions today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you.